There was just no one that could have made that noise, but I heard a woman clear as day humming three notes and, as I say, one of the most amazing paranormal experiences I've had. There is somebody walking around this building. That was a laughter. Ghostly children's voices. A dead soldier that died here in a tragic accident, as well as a grey lady. These are just some of the ghosts reported here at Vane Tempest Hall in Durham. But what will I get tonight when I spend my full night alone in this building with just this night vision camera to document it? There are many places across Durham that are still said to have the spirits of the past. A few weeks ago, I investigated the former prison that is now Jimmy Allen's nightclub inside the old Elvet Bridge. But there's another place I've wanted to go to for a long time, Vane Tempest Hall. Built in 1863 and opened two years later as the Gilesgate Militia Barracks, this mock castle style building has been the home to a number of army units. The first claim is that a ghostly figure of a soldier haunts the courtyard in the spot where his head was blown off by a cannon malfunctioning. It is a little bit true, and I have dived straight into the Durham archives thanks to the Gilesgate Historical Society and found that there was indeed a soldier that died on this site, but it was actually believed to be a suicide in a powder room which was once on the site of these new built houses. Take a look at this footage captured in 2019 on a Halloween ghost hunt. This mist appears to move past windows in the area that is said to be haunted by this soldier. In 1884, these barracks became the isolation hospital for smallpox. Smallpox is one of the oldest diseases known to humans, having been found in Egyptian mummies and possibly predating human populations. It is a nasty disease and has killed over 300 million people in the 20th century alone. I can guarantee that many people died here during this period, as scientists have estimated that 80% of children infected with smallpox died. Symptoms were unpleasant, high temperature, vomiting, rashes and death. Could the pain and suffering of those that spent their final days clinging onto life before slipping away with huge discomfort be responsible for ghostly sounds heard inside the building? Who is the strange female ghost that has been felt by so many that visit here? Kaylee runs a paranormal group that has investigated this hall before. Kaylee, you've had an experience in Van Tempest Hall. What, what did you feel? What happened to you? Essentially, I heard a woman humming in the corridor, but there was no one that that could have come from. My partner at the time was at the other end, so in one of the main halls at the other side of the room, and I was just walking towards the toilets. We were waiting on people turning up, and my friend was outside having a tab. Um, we were waiting. I was going to go to the loo beforehand, and I rushed out thinking, oh, well, they must have arrived. But she was outside still smoking, said nobody had turned up. He was at the other end of the room and, at, sorry, the other end of the building and there was just no one that could have made that noise but I heard a woman clear as day humming three notes and, as I say, one of the most amazing paranormal experiences I've had, unexpected. Is this the same female spirit that is regularly seen outside of the hall, in the graveyard where many soldiers and smallpox victims are buried? One witness claims he was in this graveyard when he saw a whitish figure appearing to glide across the grass. But who is she? Did she die here? Some believe she was once in a relationship with a soldier and upon hearing about her lover's death at war, she ran to this bridge and threw herself off into the small ravine. Her spirit roams the former barracks as she looks for her man. Others claim the legend predates the hall and was once a story passed down from generation to generation by kids who grew up playing in the Gilesgate area of Durham. During World War II, the hall was used again for military purposes, this time as a lookout for potential German attacks. 
One ghost that is often talked about is that of John, the former caretaker who died in 2005. He spent decades working at Vane Tempest and rarely left the place. His trademark was always to offer to put the kettle on and to make people a warm drink. And mysteriously, since his death, this kettle has started switching on by itself. Finally, take a look at this footage. It was taken in a converted office one night while a seance was taking place in Vane Tempest Hall. Jeremy, who rents the space, later found out that his office was once the stable, which was converted into a morgue for those that died of smallpox. I don't understand this. We're doing a ghost hunt and that started happening. And honestly, I know why it does it. If I turn it off, if I take the batteries out, it does it. Why is it doing it now? I've never seen it do it before. I don't believe in ghosts. It's still, it's gone past the right time, so it can't be resetting the time. Uh oh. <laughs> it's meant to be haunted. It's time to get the lights off and to go inside. Before I do, please like and subscribe to the Dead Air channel for loads more content and full on investigations and scary true stories. No camera crews, no teams, no lights on. I'm going into this building completely alone. So, here we are. We are in the grounds of Vane Tempest Hall here in Gilesgate in County Durham. And it's a place I've really wanted to come to for a long time. And finally, I've got the chance to have this whole place locked down just for myself, just for tonight. I'm going to show you a little bit around. I'm starting outside in the car park. So I'm just going to flip and turn this camera around just to show you a little bit about what we've got in front of us here. So the main building, this is obviously um, modern day. There's a little cafeteria area uh, that's just in here. And obviously the main part of the building is now uh, these doors here, which I'll just focus on. That's the bit we're going to go into um, tonight. Back in the day, um, this car park area just out here, which is hard to focus because someone's got a, one of those silly lights on that lights up when you walk past. They're doing my head in. There's a car park just here. Um, originally, there was an armory in the middle of this car park, a big round armory. That's since been demolished and made way for the car park inside. This wing, this was the smallpox hospital. Um, it was an isolation ward actually. People with the disease were brought in here. We're gonna go into this bit um, very later. And then of course up here, we mentioned this place was an army barracks. It was a, uh, a militia building. And this is the bit um, up here that we're talking about. Quite a bit of history to, well, sighting wise to tell you about this balcony. Up here, there was a, well, there's reports of a black figure, a black shadow that walks along here. Many people who work, because these are rented offices up here, people who uh, work up here have seen it on plenty of occasions. Apparently, if you tell it to just go away, it just vanishes into thin air. Over here, behind this white door, straight ahead of me, this was the dead room. People who died, when this was a hospital, were brought here and now it's private offices again. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to go into these, these rooms here, but that is what we're talking about. The video as well of the mist that was seen, that was recorded, we think over here, and it went past those windows just on that bottom floor right there. We'll try and debunk that later on but I'm just going to go inside and just have a little look just to see what we've got so I must just warn you the doors here are very squeaky I told you so <laughs> so we can go into the hall through there or I can show you there is some stairs that go up go up there a little bit later on 
Can't turn those lights off. Sadly, they stay on permanently. I'm gonna go into the hall. <laughs> Here we go. So we can go left or we can go right. I'm gonna go this way just to start off with. When I'm propping these doors open, I actually shouldn't. I'm actually tempted to move that fire extinguisher. I don't want these these doors kept open. That's better. You can't hear doors bang, can you, in the something's propping them up. So this is the first room. That we've got so we'll be doing some things in here again this is very um, military orientated this wing of the building so we'll come in here and like I said there is the story of the, the soldier who took his head off with a cannon we'll be looking into that later on by the way I just want to show you something as well um, at the minute we are using night vision so I am using an LCD screen to be able to see where I am because if I don't I see this complete darkness so you can see we kind of need uh, night vision on it's an invisible infrared light and uh, so when you think it looks quite nice in here it looks quite light it doesn't look scary I am in complete darkness when I'm in here so I'm just going to walk around here to the left hand side because this is the area of Vane Tempest Hall that was used as a smallpox hospital. Now I need to draw your attention to this room. Normally I wouldn't be allowed to go in here during the daytime but it's said there's a young boy, a young male soldier that has been seen and has been picked up by various people in this room. Like I say, do excuse me. This was once an office. Now, of course, ladies' toilets and, wow, the myth of having sofas and all sorts in the ladies' toilets is, uh, don't want to stay in there too long. But yeah, that was once an office, office space. Now, obviously, used for community groups. Oh, wow, look at this. The sports hall now. I'll shut this door behind me. As you can see on the floor, used for court games. I think there's a badminton court. It does have a little bit of a sweat smell in here. But this was once the isolation unit for the smallpox hospital here in Durham. And it's mad when you think of children that came into a hospital with smallpox, 80% of them died. I mean, get that fact in your head. You think coronavirus, COVID is a bad thing, it is. But when you're talking about a, a mortality rate of 80%, People suffered in here. Imagine being isolated from loved ones, not being able to see your parents or your children or your brothers and sisters or whoever, and you were kept away from everybody. And of course, it looked a lot different. I don't know how many beds they would have had in here. But I imagine it was very unpleasant. By the way, that's, uh, that's not a light that you're seeing up there. If I just turn night vision off, you'll see it's actually the IR light from a CCTV camera. But obviously when I turn IR on, it does illuminate. In fact, if I just turn IR off, that's what I see. And then with night vision on, I'm literally looking through an LCD screen that's about two and a half inches long. And I'm only knowing where I'm going just by looking at the screen. Otherwise I'm in complete darkness in this room. So there's quite a few hauntings. A lady is said to sing 
It's said to hum songs in this area of the building. Can she come forward tonight? That, by the way, is a... not sure what that is. It's like a building within a building. If there's any spirits in here tonight, can you come forward? Can you let your presence be known? It is quite echoey in here. I'm going to knock on this wall. Can you copy me? I've heard doors can slam in this building. Can you open any of these doors? Can you close these doors and slam them? Did he die in here? Of the horrible disease. See some chairs, just, I think those are chairs in the corner. Can you move one of those? Can you scrape it on the floor? It's also quite interesting to point out. I don't think you can see through there. But uh, on the other side of there, there's a bowling green. And on the other side of that bowling green, there's some quite new built houses. It's also quite interesting to point out. I don't think you can see through there. But uh, on the other side of there, there's a bowling green. And on the other side of that bowling green, there's some quite new built houses. Listen to this again. This definitely sounds like a door opening somewhere in the building. It sounded like an internal door, just as many people have experienced before. And on the other side of that bowling green, there's some quite new built houses. There was nobody else in the building with me, and all the lights are off. And as I rush outside to see nobody around, and there are no cars leaving in the car park. Hello? Hello? As you can see from this footage entering, a fire extinguisher was holding open the only door that was not closed, which I decided to move, knowing that this building was known for paranormal activity with doors. Has my handheld mic on the camera picked up the first paranormal activity caught on camera in Vain Tempest Hall? Knowing I may actually be in the company of a spirit, I decide to use a spirit box to see if a voice can come through. What you will hear next will send a shiver down your spine. So I'm going to use a device now that you might have seen before on the channel, the Spirit Box. This uses white noise, it plays it forwards, backwards, 
and allow us, potentially, people believe, it can allow spirits to communicate and uh, to be able to talk, maybe even answer questions as well. So I'm just going to set this away. Um, Spirit, are you in this room with me tonight? That is a laughter. That is a laughter. Spirit, what is your name? Were you in here when this was a hospital? Did you die in this building? Were you in here when this was an army barracks? Can you say your name really clearly? I'm going to try moving through to another part of the building. See if we can get anything coming through. I'm going to show you something that was used. We can use this corridor. Like. One of the uh, spirits that is said to haunt this area is a former caretaker. He goes by the name of John. Apparently John used to like making people cups of tea, cups of coffee. And his trademark sentence was always, I'm going to go and put the kettle on. And various people have claimed that when they've asked out for John, the kettle has come on in the kitchen, which is just through here. Here we go, this is the kitchen area. John, I'm really thirsty at the minute. I could do with a brew, I could do with a nice warm drink. Can you put the kettle on? I can hear footsteps. Listen.
someone walking around. Listen. That's just an outside door. Can you hear somebody walking around? It's coming from directly above my head. And that's the exact part of the building where people have seen a dark shadow walking. There is somebody walking around this building. There is somebody walking around this building. I hope that microphone picked up what I could hear. It's just coming from here. I can't get up there, it's a locked office. It's a private business. And I still hear it. Outside, can it? It's almost like somebody with big boots on. Who yeah, is that? Could that be somebody from the army? Could that be somebody from the army days when this was a militia barracks? If there's a spirit in this room or in this building, can you make a noise like a knock or a bang? Can you stamp your foot on the floor if you can hear me? It's a very dull thud. I can definitely hear something. I can definitely hear something walking around inside Vane Tempest Hall. I wish I could get up there. I wish I could get up there. Unfortunately, we can't. Let's down this corridor. at this part of the building. I see we can hear drips coming from the toilet down this corridor. Is there a spirit in here with me? I can definitely hear footsteps. Somebody is walking around. Somebody is walking around this building. Where was it? Can I still? It's from here. But I know there's no. That's an outside door. There's nothing on the other side of that door. And just to prove that, you can see the window. Just here, there's nothing on the other side of that wall. You can see out the window, there's the car park. There is nobody else in the building. I am the only person here tonight. That is so strange.
The SLS, or the Structured Light Sensor Camera, maps figures. It picks up a stick figures based on the sensors, picking up on a variety of things. This is the same technology found in gaming consoles to detect players in the room. I scanned the entire building and found this stick figure appearing to sit on these stack of chairs. Whilst having a break with the lights on, I heard a tapping sound coming from one of the windows and quickly started recording on my phone, only to find out it was nothing more than a light sensitive moth. Many people, myself included, claim to have experienced cold spots and brushes of cold air, specifically in the area once used as a smallpox isolation unit. From using this thermal imaging camera, I detect a cold spot coming from one of the windows, which appears to have a hole in the glass. This is probably a clear explanation for these sudden cold spots. Now I can't hear it anymore. I could hear footsteps in here. We've had the SLS camera. We've taken it around the building. And we weren't getting much being picked up now. I've been in that, that room at the end. And this was the room we say, we say was used as the smallpox infirmary. Should we go in here? Now, before I get called a pervert, remember this is the room that was once an office. Said to be a male spirit in here. If you're in here with me, can you appear next to me in the mirror? Can you make a noise or something? Again, can you copy my knock? I've got to admit, ladies' toilets do smell a lot better than the, the gents' toilets. This is probably the only time I'll probably be allowed in one, but... Although if you use the uh, this community centre, apologies if you're now terrified of using the toilet here. I'm still drawn out to this corridor. Do an EMF sweep. Is there any spirits in this part of the building? I know there's a soldier that's said to haunt this area. Can you show yourself? Have you appeared as a mist on CCTV before? Are you George? Once a caretaker? I still want that cup of tea. Can you put the kettle on? I'm 
Let's see if I can still hear those footsteps. to the top of these stairs. Now it's really kind of one of the workers here at Vane Tempest Hall who hires out one of these office spaces to actually allow us to come and film in his office. Now he has one of the most unique office spaces probably any paranormal investigator would love to have because this was the dead room. Smallpox victims, people who died, would come and their bodies would be stored in this room. Let's have a little look around. As you can see, we've got the computer. He's got all sorts going on in here. DJ decks for the kids. Oculus Rift, because he's cool. Look at that, all sorts for the kids to do. But look at this as well. This is an original from when this was used as a um, stables before this was used as a dead room. This original part of the building has got to stay and obviously how cool to keep decks on top of that as well. And of course you get the view looking out of a vein tempest hall. Is anybody in here who would like to communicate with me? Did you move on? Did you die in this hospital? Is your spirit still here? as well. It's got the original stable door. You just can't imagine. I'm going to turn the brightness of the IR light down a bit. It's a bit bright on the walls. There we go. You've got to imagine there would have been no refrigerators back in the day. But I've got to thank Jeremy for allowing me the chance to come into filming here because it's not everybody that gets access to this part of Vain Tempest Hall. And it's obviously great work what he does now and what this this room, this office space is used for. It's positive things helping the community out here in Doom. After investigating Vain Tempest Hall, I decided to head outside and go into the woods, into the graveyard. This is exactly the spot where many people claim to have seen the Grey Lady just gliding across the grass. So I've headed out into the woods out the back here of Vane Tempest Hall. I'm currently on the small, well, more of a metallic 
structure bridge but this is where the legend of the grey lady is supposed to have originated from i'm deep in the woodland by the way now and it's eerily silent everything is silent around here no animal sounds let's see what we can get Is any grey lady who would like to appear to me tonight on this bridge who apparently jumped to a sad death in the ravine below can you make yourself known can you make a noise In the distance I can hear very, very faint cars going past. I can see the tree line and then a big drop. And my, I'm not very good at estimating distances, but it's a long way down. It's certainly die. Is it just a legend? As a bat goes swooping past. Is it all just a legend? Or is there some truth to this? The, the story seems to predate Vane Tempest Hall. It's something that all the locals around here grew up hearing about. I'm going to make my way to the graveyard. And I might have to be quiet for a little bit because we are going to walk past houses and it is ten past three in the morning. <laughs> so I'm just going to walk up here and whisper because we are going to go past a block of flats. start with this. I'm being very quiet because we are in a residential area but this is allegedly the graveyard where the grey lady is seen gliding across the grass. I've been very careful where I walk. Some of these graves are no longer marked out of respect. I'm not going to put any gadgets on. No flashing gizmos. Again, because you can't quite see there because it's all in darkness, but it's people's houses. And if I put a, a spirit box on in here, it would probably wake them up. 
adventuring around this graveyard. Is it just a legend? Or is there really a grey lady that haunts this place? I came here in the daytime. You can see a, a gravestone there that's been broken. And these ones, look at how overgrown this is. You've literally got to rummage through trees just to find the graves. Look at this. This is one of the most overgrown cemeteries I've been in. Is the grey lady in here? Can she show herself on dead air? Her first camera appearance. Grass is already starting to get a bit wet with the dew. That's an owl. rummaging over there. Is that some sort of animal? Let's have a look. Something's gone through the undergrowth. I think it'll be an animal. see it. There's something in there. It'll probably be a, a fox or a mouse or something. with headphones on I do apologise that twig just snapped. It's quite a few soldiers, smallpox victims as well. That's something something is hooting away. Is it just a legend? My night in Van Tempest Hall in Durham had come to an end. We've dived into some of the history and debunked some of the claims, but this is still an amazing building with a lot of history. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Dead Air channel where there is plenty more content just like this already on there, with plenty more videos still yet to come.